Charlie Gasparino has been looking at things because, Charlie, just today we learned that Turkey has banned uh, cryptocurrency in general until um, they can sort this out, just as, you know, a number of states, the Florida, uh, you know, Miami commissioner, uh, looking at using that as a way residents can, can pay their taxes. So it, it comes and goes. But where is all this going in your eyes? Well, you know, regulation, when you talk to crypto investors, and I spend some time doing that, they... Regulation is the one thing that can knock this price down. And even if, if, if crypto and Bitcoin, if Bitcoin and these other parts, Ethereum, they were down by half, um, you know, they would still be up from where they were. It'd still be an amazing ride, but it would be down from where a lot of people put their money in, and which is now. So regulation is something that crypto investors have to look. And, and after Turkey, um, you know, this has been reported, but we'll say it again, you know, India is looking for a ban. Uh, if you can't, if, if various countries enact bans, that's going to be a problem with, for the for the uh, for the prices uh, of, of Bitcoin and Ethereum and, and the other uh, digital currencies. Uh, the question really becomes what happens in the U.S., where it's where we see growing acceptance, you know, particularly in the private economy. You can buy a Tesla with with, with, with cryptocurrencies now, uh, as you mentioned, Miami. Uh, but out of Washington, Janet Yellen has. Um, has has basically been been very critical of the use of Bitcoin. So clearly, she's the point person. Uh, Jen Psaki, the, the, the Biden's press secretary, said she's the point person. But she will also be sharing some responsibilities on this with Gary Gensler. And it's it's hard to figure out where Gensler, you know, fits in terms of the regulatory schematic of 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 the cryptocurrencies. And I think that's where the pricing is going to have an impact. Um, on the positive side. If you're a bull on crypto, he taught cryptocurrency and blockchain stuff at MIT. He was an academic before he went to the SEC as head of, as, as chairman. Um, on the negative side, I just got this from a former student of his. Uh, he reminded me that during his class, he wasn't like such a big fan. He was often speaking negative about it. So um, clearly, there's going to be some regulatory impact between um, between uh, Yellen and Gensler, do they face off? Do they agree? And uh, if they agree, if, if you fi find him moving towards the Yellen position on crypto regulation, again, she's been very critical of it, then, you know, there's going to be some, it has to be some price impact because there's going to be more regulation. I mean, it's going to come out of Washington with the SEC and the Treasury Department. So uh, this is something I think every investor has to figure out. Where does Gensler and Yellen come out on this? Who takes the lead? And, you know, who's who's driving the, 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 um, the ship on crypto regulation? Because there's going to be some. The question is how much? Uh, I, I don't think, and when you talk to investors on this, Neil, you know, you just kind of walk through the steps. You know, could the U.S. theoretically ban crypto because there's this whole side economy and side currency going on? Uh, it's, it's, it's really hard for governments to ban things. You know what I'm saying? It's just... You know, the, the, the I'm people figure we, out. We're at the point where it's too late to do that, right? Yeah, I mean, let's yeah. say they do establish these ETFs, eight or nine of them are being lined up uh, by the SEC to get that clearance. There's one in Canada now that penetrates via an ETF or several, um, and all these other vehicles through which people are buying these right. alternative uh, currency investments. Well, then let's it just might say be too late, and that itself, government intervention itself could have more than effect of just hitting this this particular market, well, but the general market, right? You could say, let's, uh, let's ban them, and you can't trade them, the ETFs, on you know, any U.S. exchange. But there are other exchanges out there. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard right. to keep the, uh, the genie in the bottle in, in, the in the global financial world we're in. So, but I would say this. If I'm investing in this, I would just watch this regulation. This, this is, aside from whether Bitcoin is worth $63,000 or not, um, there's a whole regulatory aspect here, and the smart people I talk to right. are, are worried about regulation. Suppose to cut it in half. That would, by the way, people bought, people were buying Bitcoin at 50, 40, 50. I mean, if it went down to 30, it would still, if you looked at a, a, a chart, it would still be way above where it was two years ago, but it would be half of where it is now, and there's a lot of value destruction there. And just think, you yeah, wouldn't be able to buy. The coin base, if you think about the Coinbase CEO when he started out, I mean, Bitcoin was you know trading at around twenty twenty five bucks. I I don't even have to, to do the math there to tell that that obviously right. it did very well. That's why he's worth twenty billion plus right now. But I do want to get your very quick thoughts on. I know you're loath to give people investment advice, uh, but there is a school of thought that says this should be uh, money you can afford to lose. This should be if you want to dabble in this. 
and you know it, you're, 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 you're you know, hanging on to a tiger, uh, recognize that you could lose it all. But it, it better not be the money you're saving for your kids' education. That is if you like your kids. Uh, but, but the other, <laughs> that you don't want to risk. You don't want to risk here unless you're willing to lose. What do you think of that? Well, you know, listen, it gets back to investing 101, right? It's uh, you should be diversified. Right. Um, people that came into the pandemic decently diversified, um, not 100 percent in stocks. I mean, I remember when the pan pandemic first started, it was February of, of, of last year, right before the real you know what hit the fan. I said, you know, if you rode this market up all the way, now might be a time to take 20, 30 percent off the top. Just it, it, and people looked at me. There were some people internally that criticized me of of sowing fear. All I was saying is protect yourself a little bit. You rode it to the top. You go into somewhat cash when the thing bottoms out, and we figure out where we're going with the economy, the the, pande the economy, and the markets vis-a-vis -vis the pandemic. Start buying again. It turned out to be good advice. I just think that you know when you ride something up like this this long, it's not bad to take a take some off the top and find something else to put your money in because it's it's all about diversification going forward and if it does crash or go down by 15 20 percent and you still believe in it well you can buy some more i mean uh, you know ace greenberg the legendary right. investor was all about that he, he he didn't mind taking losses because but he didn't want to stay in till till it hit rock bottom because why did, when he was taking those losses he could have been making gains on other stuff that's right Diversify, diversify. I always remember the JFK line, remember the inaugural address, those who want to chase the tail of the tiger should recognize the danger right. that they could soon be in. The tiger. That, that's that's right. absolutely well, true. Well, thank you, my friend. I don't think he was talking about Bitcoin at the time, but you don't know. We, we don't know what the <laughs> motivation for that remark Very was. Very smart man, I was by just the way. loosely <laughs> paraphrasing there, indeed, as are you, my friend.